everyone and I am looking like a glazed donut this morning um wow yikes <laughs> I guess my skin is very happy right now but I pretty much just use my usual Premier Crew my sunscreen I use my Dermalogica Biolumin C Serum this morning and of course Caudalie and I had the most interesting conversation with my mom last night because my mom, um, obviously she lives in Venezuela, she had lots of sun exposure when she was young and so she has a lot of sunspots, sun damage and some melasma on her skin and she had some spots around her eyebrows which you could tell were very surface level, um, like dark spots and we were chatting last night because I was telling her about skincare and whatever and um, she says that she has seen these spots lighten around her eyebrows and she thinks it's because of this. I think she said she was on her second or third bottle perhaps and there you go. And I mean, for me, it's really cool to hear that feedback, but also the fact that I got to go into the lab, the Caudalie lab, and see physical cell samples of what this does and has done to people's skin is super, super cool. So I've gotten like everyone on this, like my mom uses this, I use this, Jack uses this. <laughs> um, it is truly the best. So if you're looking for a serum, this is it. But yeah, skin is very, very happy. Whilst I do my makeup, I wanted to chat to you a little bit about Botox and give you an update about my Botox. Now, before I get into this conversation, because it seems to be a very touchy subject for a lot of people, just a reminder that I am doing Botox to my body, not yours, and we can agree to disagree to what we do with our bodies. At the end of the day, the amazing, amazing thing about life is that Right now, us women have the choice to what we, well, not in all countries, um, we, <laughs> regarding Botox, um, we have the choice to either get Botox or not get Botox. And that is amazing. We should celebrate that and not arguing about you shouldn't do this because I don't think it's right. Anyways, you get the gist of where I'm going with that. So let's all agree to disagree. And um, the reason I've done this is because it makes me feel better. <laughs> all right. So I have now gone in for my second round of Botox because after about six, seven months, it started to wear off and I was starting to clench again. I could feel that my jaw was getting quite sore and tender again and it was becoming very unpleasant. My headache started coming back. And so I booked another appointment to get my Botox done again. So I just want to share with you some of the like experiences, like the post Botox experience really, and some of the things that I experienced. So the first one was my headaches stopped. I think the reason my headache stopped was well, there was no constant pressure from me clenching my jaw. And so that stopped quite quickly. And that was one of the first things that I noticed. The second thing that I noticed, and I didn't realize this was going to make such a big difference, but the puffiness in my face in the mornings drastically, drastically decreased. And again, I think the pressure of me clenching my jaw at night made my face super puffy. Um, my lips were puffy, my, my, my nose area and my cheeks were puffy. And I will actually put a photo of me before I got Botox on the screen here for you. And I look at this photo and I look like I have like chipmunk cheeks. Um, and I just think it's because this was all swollen. It's crazy the difference. And that it makes then their other kind of side effect of Botox is this again not a bother doesn't impact how I eat or what I eat or anything and I was warned about this but pretty much when you eat something really really chewy like a day old baguette or something like that your jaw is gonna feel like a little fatigued like you know when you do like a little workout and your muscles are like whoo kind of feeling the burn you kind of need to take a break that is exactly what your jaw is gonna feel like and that's what my jaw felt like and still does every so often it's not all the time um, and it's also not a nuisance whatsoever but it definitely happens um, which I find kind of funny every so often I'm eating and I'm like oh, I just need to take a break and kind of sit there with you know food in my mouth. This time around when I went in, I had to get the same amount of Botox put in. Now that is not common. Typically what's going to happen is because when the muscle atrophies, it's never really going to go back to the strength that it originally was. For me, my muscles and my clenching seem to be quite strong, meaning that 
because I didn't get Botox right away when I felt it wearing off, my muscles very, very quickly went back to clenching and built up their strength. And so that was my experience. So unfortunately, this time around, I had to get the same amount and I did bruise a little bit. You can see it there. I'm not gonna even bother covering it up, to be honest. I don't think it's a big deal. I don't wanna touch the area either. But she did reassure me that realistically over time, those dosages are gonna go down. And if you're curious how much I've had in mine, um, I want to say I've had about 50 units on either side. Now, for some people, that's going to be a lot. But again, this is all dependent on how strong your muscles are. If you're someone who is going in to get TMJ Botox and you don't have TMJ and you're just doing it for the aesthetics, you might not be getting more than 10, 20 units like a side, right? Like it's all going to be really, really dependent on how strong that muscle is. For me, fortunately, I had to get quite a lot, which for the bank account is not nice, I will say that. But yeah, that's just the reality of my situation. My muscles just seem to be very, very strong and adamant on what they're doing. It's fine. Um, but yeah, it is amazing how great I feel with it and I mean thank God for science sometimes honestly because it is life life changing um, I think my mom is definitely considering it um, but I think she's a bit more afraid I mean I was super afraid the first time I got it but I think she's a little bit hesitant to get Botox I have always been a little bit kind of hesitant about Botox I think I got so desperate with my clenching that I was like I don't care anymore what the like I just I needed relief and that was the one thing that was going to provide relief because any of the other methods like say a mouth guard is not going to prevent you from clenching it's just going to protect your teeth which from a like dental perspective that's really good you want to you know protect your teeth and stuff but yeah anyways that's just a little bit of an update on that um let me know if you guys have any questions I will definitely try my best to answer them um in the comments below and just kind of answer you guys individually but yeah I just wanted to give you an update because it has been a great great experience and if you live in Toronto I go to the tight clinic and Liz is the one that does my Botox and she's really really wonderful you know she knows what she's doing and I like to be in a room with someone that knows what they're doing so yeah just uh just letting you guys know also this Jones Road bronzer is phenomenal it's what I've been using every single day um, couldn't speak more highly of it. But anyways, I am going to finish up my makeup and get ready for the day. I'm gonna stop blabbing because God knows how long I've been talking for. So anyways, talk to you in a bit. <laughs> like Holly Cooper gals. We are right now on the way back to um, the house, but I've spent the day with mom and Jack. Dad is actually away on a business trip, but we went on a super long walk on the golf course and it was super snowy. So that's what you will have seen snippets of. And then after the golf course, we stopped for, my poor mom is stuck with her belt. <laughs> Did you figure it out or are you just giving up? It's gonna get stuck. <laughs> Anyways, after the golf course and our long walk. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> oh, she's fighting with the belt because it keeps getting stuck on her. Anyways, um, after the golf course, we went and grabbed like Lupper. 
yeah, lunch lover um, at Evo Kitchen, which is a really cute restaurant in uh, Cambridge, like downtown Galt. And we shared a bunch of food. We had the best um, fish tacos there. If you stop by Evo Kitchen, try the fish tacos. They're really, really good. We had some halloumi cheese and a little like flatbread with like pesto and chicken and prosciutto. It was really, really good. And then we took a bit of a walk and I found a new little bookstore in Cambridge. Oh, let me find the name of it. It's on Main Street in Cambridge, but Rookery Books is a really, really cute little bookstore. Um, and they had a Chimamanda book, so I got Americana, which is actually the one that I wanted to read from her. Um, so that's the one I picked up. And then, um, yeah, we just went for walked for a little bit longer, but now we're heading home. I have to do work, Jack has to do work, so does mom. Um, and now we're probably gonna watch a movie tonight. So, yeah, but anyways. It's been a good and chilly day today. Hello everybody and I hope everyone is doing super, super well. Today I'm really excited because my anthropology order came in. In my last video, was it last video? Maybe the one before that. I had done a little bit of a haul and I had purchased a few things from Anthropology, which actually has been a brand that I've like been rediscovering. I feel like Anthropology had its moment like five years ago, maybe a little bit longer than that. Um, and it kind of just, I don't know, no one talked about it. I didn't shop there. Um, I think they had two locations in Toronto and they closed one of them. So now there's only the one on Queen Street. And I just, yeah, I never really shopped there. But recently, because Ritzia has been honestly not great. Um, I have been venturing out to different brands and Anthropology caught my attention. I placed an order and I bought the Maeve pants, which I know so many of you have gotten and have loved. And they're amazing. And confirmed, they are technically supposed to be black and I actually went back on the website and after looking at all of the reviews um people were saying that they shouldn't be called black because they're like a dark blue color and it's true so even though the website does state that they are black the type of black is more like navy blue really which is unfortunate because I feel like if they were true black they would be absolutely stunning so if you do get them just be aware that they're not they're not like a pure black but anyways with that order I was actually missing one of the pieces and it just came in today so let me show you so this is the Maeve shirt in a size small and it's like a black and white stripes but it's also got I don't know if you can see like little brown stripes in there as well almost like a gold color and then the buttons are like a gunmetal material super super pretty now i hope looking at this now i hope it doesn't give like beetlejuice vibes but i'm gonna wear it today and put it on and just the material feels really really nice it's nice and soft i feel like this will be a really nice material in the summer but yeah i think i'm just gonna put some pants on and and show it to you so let's do that so i've added my jacquemus trousers with a little belt now i honestly am wishing i had a simple black belt that didn't have like a logo motif. I think, I wanna say it's Hermes that has like the non logo belts, but I feel like I've looked at them and they're, they seem very overpriced for what they are. Anyways, I guess so is this. <laughs> Anyways, if you know of some like good high quality brands that do belts with like no logo, no motif or anything, let me know. Cause I feel like it's just throwing this off. I really, really like the shirt. And I didn't realize, but the cuffs have a little bit of like a balloon sleeve and the cuffs fit really, really nice. I sometimes have cuffs that are so big that just like droop down on my hands, but these stay up really, really well. So yeah, I really, really like this shirt. It's really, really pretty. And the fabric feels really, really good. So I have come out here because I have officially started ordering some furniture for my house and I'm so so I thought I would open up these boxes with you. This one is quite it's quite large and do some organizing in this apartment because there are some areas in this apartment like my laundry room, which I can't believe I'm going to show you my mess of a laundry room. They are just not functional and they're small spaces and I've really had to do some digging as to how I can make my space more functional without putting holes in the walls. I mean, I can do that, but I'm, I'm trying not to put holes in the walls if I don't have to because obviously I'm just renting this apartment and um, you know it's really easy to make things functional when you can nail things and put shelves up but without being able to do that it makes it a little bit trickier so 
I actually want to start with my laundry room and do that together so I'm going to show you my laundry room as it currently looks and don't mind it I'm in the midst of doing laundry but I mean I'm always in the midst of doing laundry so this is my laundry room here hi um, so we've got the washer dryer here um, and then in this corner here which is really really small I've got my vacuum my mop and then this is a horrible area but I've got like recycling and I typically just use like um, paper bags to put my recycling in there and then over here we've got a laundry bin some <laughs> Nespresso pods washing that typically I leave some washing in here to go in there next and then I've got some detergents on the floor some extra chairs and then just some extra random laundry and stuff up there and then up here I keep like little dryer sheets and some little bags for my lingerie to wash so essentially as you can tell this space is not functional um, and it's a pain in the butt to just walk in because sometimes this space here ends up being like filled with um, recycling so I get lots of packages lots of boxes and I'm lazy I don't love taking it down all the time so this space ends up being filled up with recycling and then I can't just do any of my stuff and it's just a hot mess delivery that I got is something for that space so let's actually start opening this stuff up together and get it all situated so let's do it all right let's start with what I got for the laundry room now this is actually from Amazon and I have to admit the moment I saw this I kind of knew it was going to be perfect um, for that space I like ran to get up got my measuring tape and this was at like 11 o'clock at night um, because I was doing some late night shopping <laughs> but I'm very excited for this because I feel like that space is so infuriating and laundry is already such a nuisance of a task so yeah so essentially what I got for my laundry room is a little setup like this so it's two laundry bins and a little kind of shelving unit so you can actually put stuff on here and it's actually really pretty it's black um, hardware with like a brown like wooden top um, I don't think it's actual real wood but besides the point anyways let's open this up I'm very excited oh no looks like we might be doing some building yikes it looks like there are in fact instructions so i want to scratch the floor that looks really really nice so far yeah that's really really pretty happy with it so far If you're a woman or a girl living alone, this toolkit from Ikea is literally everything you will ever need. Alright, let's open this up. So it looks like they slide out like that and these little bins kind of get attached to them. Now, these look like they're kind of a navy blue. What is with wax looking like navy recently? But actually a pretty decent size oh yeah that's awesome okay This is the little setup. Now I will say online these looked black, not blue, but it's not bad. I really, really do like this up here. I'm thinking a couple little baskets up here for different things like um, the dryer sheets, the detergent, and then I have all my Dyson attachments, and which right now don't have a home, but it's not bad. But okay, let's put this in the laundry room now. Also, I have to pick up all of this stuff I'm watching too hot to handle right now. <laughs> Do 
we have the laundry set up and this looks so much better already. I'm thinking, like I said, a couple little bins here. But right now what I'm going to do is actually put all my laundry in here. And then I can get rid of my other little laundry hamper. Just to quickly show you what it looks like with everything on. I think this is so brilliant if you're someone like me who just doesn't have a lot of space to work with. But I've got all my detergents on here and I've got some of my dryer um, little balls in there. But... Yeah, this is amazing. Obviously, I'm going to get some baskets and get this organized better. And I think this should be, yeah, it's just about done. That can go in the recycling soon. But yeah, oh, such a brilliant little setup here. I love it so much. I will link it down in the description box. But I think this was like $40, $50, $60 from Amazon. It is absolutely amazing. Now for the big box. <laughs> this piece here is actually one that I have been on the hunt for. And it is for my like front entrance right by my door. And the reason I decided to get this is because I noticed that when people would come into my apartment and leaving, they would kind of like always be looking for a place to like sit down and put their shoes on. And right when you walk in, it's there's nothing there. There's a little table, which is essential because I can have like a little bowl for people to drop like their wallets, their keys, sunglasses, stuff like that. But I felt like people would, especially when they were leaving my apartment, they would like walk over to my couch sit down and put their shoes on, which obviously there's nothing wrong with that, but it became very apparent that like I needed a, a place for people to sit down and you know, put their shoes on, get ready to go out the door. So this is what I found. And well, actually I hope I'm gonna love it because I haven't even seen it myself, but let's open this up. It is like stapled shut. damaged oh uh, okay well i literally just took this out of the box you saw me take it out of the box and there is like two little nicks here and then moving over clearly something dented this there's another nick there oh i don't even know if i should keep opening this i'm gonna call my mom to see what she recommends me to do but essentially you get a gist of what this is supposed to look like, and I'm very, very upset. Mom's always come to the rescue, but essentially, mom just told me to take a picture of it as it is, um, unbox it entirely to see if there's any other damage, take photos of it, and then um, we'll have to send all this stuff to customer service, and I didn't even mention, but, this is actually from Simon's and it's a really, really cute bench. It's wood um, and great price. I think shipping was only like $20 for this. It arrived within like a week. So it was really, really great. But um, I guess now we'll see how their customer service is. Um, so I'll have to obviously keep you guys um, updated with that. But let me finish kind of taking all this wrapping off. But, oh, that's so frustrating. It's such a beautiful, yeah and those are like grooves in there it's not even like a scratch because because i feel like a scratch you could have like you can sand and just kind of paint over but that is like a dent and this one's even worse i don't even know if you can see that but yeah anyways yeah a little bit unfortunate but um yeah that's too bad okay let me open this up so i can see if there's any further damage <sighs> So sad, so upsetting. Anyways, let's open this thing up. There is the little bench. It's super, super cute. And again, my intention was for people to be able to come in, sit down, take their shoes off. And right now I have like this little bowl here, but I was thinking maybe I could have a little bowl here, or sorry, probably here makes more sense so people don't knock it over. They can put their keys and stuff there, sit down, take their shoes off. And there's a little tiny thing, a little kind of like, um, what would you call that? Like rack, where I can put some of my shoes there and then maybe have like a little hook there for some keys and stuff or jackets but oh that's so bad that it's nicked i can see it from here there and there that's too bad so yes we'll be contacting customer service um to get that figured out um it does look really really dusty so it makes me wonder if this was just sitting in a box for a really really long time but that's too bad because it's really cute. And the last thing to be opened is also from Simon's. Let's 
cross fingers that this one is not as damaged as my bench, which I'm very sad about. So, I actually ordered a little garbage can for my bathroom. Okay. Now look, very simple. You know, you got your little, <laughs> but this was like 20 bucks and I didn't want anything super fancy. I just wanted something that was gonna be functional, but that also had a lid.